So should you start a real estate team or stay solo? It's such a common question I get from a lot of agents, but today I'm gonna to talk about the five things you need to know and kind of the two main ways you can go uh, with, a, with a team in real estate. By the way, my name's Chad Leonberg and I've coached hundreds of agents to build a six-figure business in real estate. And if you're interested in getting in touch with me on that or our Shark Partner Program, get in touch with me at the contact info below. Also, if you're an agent, let me know your thoughts on real estate teams down in the comments below. All right, so first let's talk about kind of the two types of teams. So there's really um, a solo agent team, a solo agent with like a support team basically, and then there's a true team is basically the two types that I consider. So those two types. So a solo agent with a support team, you know, this is whenever you've kind of um, just have other people doing, I mean, everybody has somewhat of a team. If you, if you, ha, you know, have an inspector and a main lender that you like to use, a uh, title company, they all kind of make up your, your team relatively in real estate. So anybody has a team of people that work through a deal and you can kind of get your preferred members on that team essentially. Um, but taking that further, you know, I think, I think one of the biggest mistakes I made, I've built a real estate team. We've sold 750 homes in the last seven years and one of the things I think I did wrong was my first hire was a buyer agent. So I think regardless of which path you're going, the first hire should be an admin or somebody can help you out with the back end stuff. Uh, doing the at desk work where you're doing the out, you know, talking with your mouth work. So that really should be your first hire. But building that further and just having a, a killer solo team. And I, and I think, you know, well, I, I think to go further on this, a lot of agents never they never fully commit to the true team side. It's like you, if you're gonna go true team, you shouldn't really be in production. So if you still plan on being production, you should focus more on the solo agent with a support team model. So that is hiring out everything one by one that you really, you know, you start lower, things you don't control the outcome with. You, you start hiring out, you know, MLS entry, the back and forth emails, putting in signs, taking pictures, a lot of those simple things that you're doing that's not really bringing and producing revenue and things that you don't control the outcome in. Setting an inspection, for example, if, if, a, if a buyer wants to set the inspection for Thursday at 4 p.m., if you do that or an admin or you know somebody in your staff does that for you, the outcome isn't gonna change. The inspection's gonna get scheduled for that date and time. So those are things you wanna look for, things you don't control the outcome in. So you wanna hire those things out first and then eventually start to move up the ladder. Things like working with buyers, and uh, doing the consults and you know the last thing you really want to hire out is things like your listing um, your, your listing appointments that's one of the highest skill things that you can do um, in real estate so I think that's something that you should hire out last so you really just would keep hiring those things out I mean what's wrong with being a solo agent and having five back-end staff members that all do various things in various levels and different skill sets you know to support you selling a hundred sales a year just as a solo agent What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. And I think it's a really good model because you, you can really push more to your personal brand and make sure you're with the people more and not in the, the back end and in the business more. So I think it's really a good mo a model if you're somebody that needs to be out, you know, touching base with everybody. But the other option though, the, the true team model, um, this, you know, if you're going to go this route, you've got to get out of the production sooner than you'd probably like. I see so many agents start, they want to do a two team model where they want to get out of production, but they never can rip the cord. There's a, there's a point where it's almost the equivalent to a new agent at some point, you know, they might have a full-time job or a part-time job paying their bills. And eventually they have to rip the cord, take the leap of faith and go full-time into real estate. Well, it's the same thing when you're building a team. At some point you have to kind of stop production yourself just so you can serve the team and really grow and scale that team. So this is where you're really going to want to build a model of leverage for your agents. So if you can create leverage for them through systems and processes, through proven coaching and lead generation methods and follow up in, 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 a, in a good system for them to have success out the gate and you just need people to work that system, this is when that really starts. So going this route, I still would make it, you know, a back end hire first, get your systems and processes dialed in and then Let's start to wind yourself out of production little by bit by bit. Uh, what happens if you don't do that is you end up taking all the good leads and your agents get mad and they think, yo, they only get the good stuff, they give me all the crap and they eventually end up leaving quicker than they, they typically will. All right, so now that we've got the two teams established, so should you start a team? You know, one of the main things I would consider is, is it time for you to, do you really need leverage? Are you, have you hit a ceiling? So, you know, a lot of agents just 
go, you know, next deal, next deal, next deal. And they don't realize eventually they do have a capacity and it's different for everybody. I've seen some agents capacities seriously be 15, 10, 15 deals. I've seen some agents capacities be a hundred deals, you know, um, some can do 50, 60. I generally would say about 35 to 60 is where an agent hits their solo capacity and where they really need to start finding leverage. So you need to check, you know, check around and, you know, take a look at your, your day to day or how, what capacity are you at? Are you really starting to hit that hundred percent? And are you going over and hitting a ceiling and starting to slack on service, slack on conversion because you have hit your ceiling. So that's the first thing. And I think the main reason why people start a team um, is because they really just need leverage. So something else to consider about starting a team is do your lead generation and do your systems and processes require you like, is, is all, is it, are you very sphere and database, you know, uh, built? If that's the case, you know, starting, especially starting a true team team where you're going to take yourself out of the process almost entirely in that case, you know, eventually that's not going to really work well. Your lead gen is going to falter off if you're needed when they come in. So if you have something in like direct response marketing, or you have, you know, like um, a good prospecting system, like you're cold calling, you're getting internet leads, or you're doing open houses and you have like a, a good lead generation system like that, that you can plug somebody in, then, you know, that's probably somewhere where you can, you can start a team. And if you don't have that, you might want to go back to the drawing board and develop that if it's something you're going to do. Now, if you do, um, have that dialed in. You do also want to think about the back end processes. Are you, do you have a system to close a deal, to list the house? Do you have a followable system? Because when you start plugging other people in, whether it's a, an admin or, um, you know, agents, there needs to be a followable template for every deal. Obviously you'll have your variables, but there needs to be a followable template, you know, not just, you know, them watching over your shoulder and figuring it out. So, you know, start with a list, lay it like, if you don't have, for example, a closing task list, lay out all the steps in a closing, lay out all the steps in a listing. You know, you could do this in not very much time. Um, what I did was I laid this all out. I put it into any simple task system. We used a lot of various ones over the years. Mainly we use Folio now for, um, it's a, it's a Google Chrome extension. Highly recommend it. I can put a link um, down here below, um, somewhere in the description for, um, for Folio. We definitely love it. We've used it for years and I think it's the most client friendly facing, um, system for listings and closings as well. But the point, I mean, you could do this with a simple task list on any app that you have like a, a you know, a 20 task template when you're closing and sending that out. If you're flying by the seat of your pants right now, that's something you definitely want to focus on. So getting your lead generation and your systems and processes, you know, in, in a systematic duplicatable format that doesn't require you, that's going to be crucial if you're going and if you're considering to start a team. One other thing to consider is, can you give up control? This is a big one. And don't think that it's not something you can't work towards. You're gonna, you know, I can tell you, I have given up control of pretty much everything in my team. I don't really run, you know, a lot of the data, very minimal of the day to day. And if you'd have told me that back when I first started this thing, it, it, you know, you would, I mean, if you would have seen me, you would have laughed. I, I wouldn't let anybody do anything. Only I could do it the right way. So if you have the only I can do it the right way mindset, it doesn't mean you can't conquer it because I'm living proof that it, it can happen, but it is something that you need to work on and be aware of. The first step towards fixing a lot of things is just being aware of that. So be being able to give up control and let others, you know, you know, pass, you pass the baton to them and trust that they'll get it across the finish line is, is something you're definitely going to need to have. And you're also going to need to have those systems and processes to be able to have checking points to make sure to, to check on that, that it is working. And the more you have that, I can't, I only, I can do it the right way feeling the more systems and processes and checkpoints and key KPIs, key performance indicators you need to be able to feel comfortable with that team running. And really the last thing to consider is in my opinion, this is the first step in building a true business. I, you know, I've, I've heard uh, a lot, I forget who said it, but you know, we don't, we don't think when we're five years old, I want to be a real estate agent. I can't wait to, you know, write documents and show houses and do this stuff. I'm not saying we don't like houses, but very rarely is realtor considered as a profession for young kids. So the point to that is we mostly all got in real estate for really financial freedom or time freedom or some form of freedom is almost what I could equate everybody's why down to. And I love to solve that problem because I feel like we've done a good job um, ourselves. So happy to share our strategies with you. Definitely get with me at the contact info below if you need some help achieving freedom. 
But that said, if you're simply just somebody looking for the next transaction, if you've been in the business 30 years and you've sold X, I sold 60 homes a year for the last 30 years. Well, then I look at you and I go, well, you didn't really figure it out. You didn't really figure out what you said. You know, you're just stuck on the hamster wheel. Maybe you're smart enough to have set up a good exit strategy financially. You invested properly. Great. That's rare. Agents have trouble paying for their taxes, let alone setting up for potential uh, retirement where you won't be looking for the next deal anymore. So, you know, if you're stuck looking for the next deal, it, it, you might want to get back in touch with why you got in this is probably to build freedom. And this is the first stepping stone in that process, in my opinion. Now, obviously, there's a lot of different ways to build a team. And this isn't the only way to build a business through real estate that can kind of work harder for you than you do for it. But I think a team is a crucial step if you want leverage. I mean, it's just it's it's built in, you know. So that's something that I definitely would consider that this might actually be what you intended to do in real estate. But first, you needed to be able to produce revenue to be able to build your business. So you had to go out and then you know, you, you might have gotten stuck just in that revenue building, revenue building, revenue building and not realized you'd need the leverage. So this could be more in touch with the true why of why you got into real estate. Uh, that's one other reason I would consider uh, when starting a team. So also, if you want to kind of look at the journey I went through building one, I've got a lot of those steps laid out. So if you go to 10 to 40.com, I actually have a training that shows kind of like a step-by-step -step process of my personal journey. You know, I definitely made some mistakes along the way so you can learn from them quicker and you can see those things that I did wrong. Uh, so go there, check it out. It's a free training. You can sign up and get on the webinar and, and check it out. And you can always jump on a call with me after if you're interested in exploring uh, any of the stuff we talk about further. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I think starting a team was one of the greatest things I um, I've ever done in the business because, you know, it was, it was definitely that I felt like that second level challenge. You know, I, I got to 60 deals my second year in real estate. And then, you know, I just knew that I, I, I couldn't do what I was doing. If my sister were to call me up to buy or sell a house, I, I, I had no time. I, my, my brain was scrambled. My schedule was a mess. I had no freedom or, you know, clarity like I intended when I, when I got into real estate. So I started that team and it's definitely been a huge factor, um, in our growth, it's enabled us to do more. And it's also taught me a lot about business and running this like a business. So it's actually been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed building it. I do miss some of the, you know, production based activities. You know, I did enjoy that little rise up, but building a team has been um, really that uh, working smarter, not harder, harder type mentality for me personally. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some things to consider and provided some value. So thanks for tuning in. Check out some more videos on our channel. Make sure you like and subscribe for future content. And like always, we will see you at the top.